Hi, I'm Ron Fuller. I am a Senior Technical Product Manager at VMware, and I focus on networking and security inside of VMware Cloud on AWS. Today, we're going to be talking about route tables inside of VMware Transit Connect. So in the previous video, if you haven't seen it, go back and check it out. We talked about the concept of SDDC groups and how we can interconnect all of these components together. What I wanted to provide a little bit of insight into is the routing itself that happens inside of the Transit Connect VMware Managed Transit Gateway, because that's an important consideration to, to take into account. So if we remember the concept of the SDDC group would allow us to be able to build out this simple connectivity model, simple to configure connectivity model um, between our software defined data centers and uh, amongst themselves, and then start to glue in additional external components, things like our on premises via the Direct Connect Gateway, native VPCs, as well as native AWS TGWs. So while that looks like, hey, is this all going to be one big monster routing table inside the infrastructure, one of the things that we do inside of Transit Connect is we want to make sure that this doesn't become transitory for communications between, say, uh, a native AWS resource and a VPC and maybe another AWS resource out here in a VPC connected to the TGW. Why is that, you might ask? Well, because this is a managed service we, VMware, own the SLA responsibility for troubleshooting it. If you were to call in and open a case with GSS and say, hey, I'm having a problem with VPC, uh, resource in VPC1 talking to resource in VPC2, we don't have insight into either of those resources. The only thing we would have in common would be that, that, in, in that transitory uh, connectivity through the, through, through the Transit Connect, and we don't want to be in that position. So one of the rules that's in place with regards to flows inside of VMware Transit Connect is that one source or destination must be an SDDC in the environment. So this means I can have SDDCs talking to SDDCs, SDDCs talking to VPCs or on-premises or out to my TGW, but I can't have native AWS resources communicating amongst themselves through Transit Connect and having maybe VPCs go across VMware Transit Connect through the Direct Connect into the on-prem. And so that kind of concept explained, the way we manifest itself, manifest this inside of Transit Gateway is we have two route tables. We have one called the member route table and one called the external route table. Now, not terribly creatively named, right? But the idea is we want to convey who can talk to what across this environment. Member route tables comprise all of the SDDCs and all external networks that are learned. This could be VPCs, this could be Direct Connect Gateway learned routes, TG, AWS TGW learned routes, et cetera, right? So that is the member table. The member table itself is presented to each of the SDECs. So now the SDECs themselves, the, the edge router in the SDEC, knows how to communicate to all of those external resources. The external route table is presented to the external entities, right? So we're, the naming is kind of derived by who we're, who we're presenting that route table to for them to understand what's going on out here. So the external route table is presented to VPCs, it's presented to the Direct Connect Gateway, and this will be a little messy, but bear with me, to TGWs, right? And so what that will comprise is the list of all of the sub segments that are configured inside of the SDDCs themselves. The, v the external route table does not have VPC routes, TGW routes, or on-prem routes, which is how we prevent that, uh, that, that potential transitory nature with inside of VMware Transit Connect. Right, so it's a pretty kind of simple, but also elegant way to be able to provide that separation of where flows can go without having to do a lot of convoluted routing and, and, and gymnastics from a networking perspective to be able to make that a reality. So it's very, very straightforward from that perspective. Now, when we start to talk about extending the SDC group concept and now looking at it from the perspective of regions, let's say this is all region one. And over here we have region three. 
and we have a TGW that's instantiated, an SDC group, and this is all part of the same SDC group, right? So now we've got our, again, kind of big super group from that standpoint. We are going to automatically provision and configure the routes between the TGWs themselves. And we're going to still have the, that, that member and external route table. Same concept applies over here as well, right? So we'll have member and external. And it will be exactly the way it's done over here, right? We'll have SDDC routes and external entity routes inside of the member route uh, route table, and then the external route table will be um, specific to, uh, to to just the SDDC routes for that um, region. So it's going to be important to realize that when in that uh, that external route configuration that the, there is some kind of regionality, if you will, that, are, that is part of that route table as well. So all the SDCs can communicate amongst themselves, but the external entities themselves um, cannot, right? They're, they're not going to be able to do cross-region communications from, from the, uh, the VPC uh, to you know, another VPC or anything else because that would violate that, that initial uh, policy. What you can do to kind of circumvent that, the customers say, well, well, I still need to have everything communicate. Great. Peer the native AWS TGWs in the different regions together and facilitate the communication that way, right? Um, no issues there. And then likewise, if I have my Direct Connect Gateway and my on-premises environment or a colo, I can still communicate that way as well. Um, because remember, this is an external entity over here. I will not be able to have SDCs communicate across the peer, uh, across the peering session, and down into that colo. It's an external entity, right? So those external entities are are regionally bound, and are the this TGW has no concept of the those on-premises routes that were learned over in this TGW because um, because that regionality kind of boundary. So again relatively simple concept as far as the member and external route tables, what they're comprised. The, the big thing to keep in mind when you start talking about multiple regions is how those routes are communicated. In general, SDCs can talk to any SDC across the board. It gets a little bit different when you talk about external entities, and that's where the regionality comes into play. So hopefully that was helpful and didn't, uh, didn't melt too many minds, right? I, I think it's a relatively straightforward concept, um, but I certainly appreciate you taking the time. Thank you very much and have a great rest of your day.